FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 31317, getting close to the Ides of March. For those of you who believe uh, there's something to be wary of, but uh, with us now, Trends Journal's Gerald Salente hasn't been with us for a while. Gerald, welcome back. Hey, always great being on with you, Kerry. Hey, and always great to have you on, Gerald. So uh, populism seems to be the word of the day, right? Uh, sweeping sweeping the uh, globe, I guess, or the Western world in any event. Yes, it is. And you even heard the Pope come out against it. <laughs> it must be good then, right? <laughs> must be good, yep. I mean, the Pope, this guy's another Obama, you know? He's just, really? Oh, that's the way I look at it. He just says uh, stuff and, and doesn't follow through. I mean, where's the Pope talking about anti-war? You don't hear a peep from the Pope about that. And I'm Catholic, you know, so I mean, I know. Yeah, I, I grew up Catholic, so I could, you know, say what I want, you know, people can't <laughs> attack me on it. And I launched Occupy Peace. I put my money where my mouth is. That's right. So when I hear the Pope doesn't, uh, you know, you don't hear him railing out against the Afghan war, the Iraq war, the Syrian war, the Yemen yeah. war, the Libyan war, mm -hmm. you know. So he's railing out against populism and trying to compare it to, you know, Nazi Germany. And they're yeah. all playing that cheap card. And you, you heard Bill Clinton come out, Slick Willie Clinton, who right. sold the country it out with NAFTA, you know, how dare we we promote protectionism? Yeah. How Why dare can't we? we protect ourselves? Hey, <laughs> you know, I, I used to teach close combat for many years. I'm a close combat practitioner. I'll protect myself. I'm not allowed to protect myself. <laughs> so what's this against protectionism? Why should I bend over for a little clown like you to sell us out to the globalists who enrich you, slick willy, yeah. with their donations that, of course, donations, adults call it bribes and payoffs. Mm -hmm. So that's what all this is about. It's the people getting shafted around the world that are tied to getting shafted. Mm -hmm. And they call it a populist movement. How dare we try to defend our ethnicity if we're Italian, if we're German, if we're Dutch, if we're French, or if we are a country of Americans. Yeah. And all of this stuff about anti-immigration Hey, everybody out there that wants more immigrants coming in when we can't take care of our own, here's what I suggest you do. Bring them into your home, feed them, school them, clothe them. You want to do it, that's your trip. Don't yeah. tell me I have to get on your trip. We have 320 million people here. We can't take care of our own. I say don't take in anybody like they did during the Great Depression. They closed the borders to everyone. Not only Mexicans, Italians, Polish, German, Irish, everybody. They did not take in people during the Great Depression. You don't bring people into your home when you can't even feed your own family. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is true. So your thoughts, uh, is Wilder is gonna win and Le Pen, you think they're both gonna, gonna win their respective elections? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I Wilders is, is definitely uh, going to be doing much better. The elections coming up in a couple of days after we heard the uh, the, the uh, Turkish president uh, Erdogan uh, over the weekend uh, is accusing the Dutch's, quote, Nazis. Yeah. Of and, all the people, uh, of all the people to accuse of being Nazis, uh, you know, it's absurd. Of course. He said Nazism is alive in the West. This is a guy, Erdogan, has locked up several thousand people because of a coup attempt. They've taken rights away from the people in Turkey. Like, you know, first rate, lost their rights. He's bombing. He's invaded Syria. He, he's started a war against the Kurds after the, uh, his party 
by the way, I think it was June of 2015, when they lost an election, they, they didn't get as many votes as they could, and they, they lost a majority. That's when he started waging the war against the Kurds. And yeah. this is a guy calling uh, the, the Dutch Nazis, and he came out against uh, Germany last week, too. What's going on, Kerry, is they have a, an election coming up on on Thursday in in uh, Turkey. Yes. And it's a referendum to give Erdogan, uh, I guess, more rights to become a dictator. It's a, it's a re it, it's redoing their constitution. So, for example, in Germany, you have about one hundred one point five million Turks mm -hmm. and they want the Turkish government wants to be able to campaign in Germany, in the Netherlands, yep. in Austria, in Switzerland, where there are a lot of Turkish people. And these countries are saying, no, man, yeah, we they don't keep want the campaign here. home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's insane. And because, yeah, well, it's no more insane than opening up our borders for tens of millions of people when we can't take care of our own. So it's the same thing. How dare you tell us what to do? Mm -hmm. is what he's saying. We sh we have the right to do anything we want in any country. So rather than, you know, being called out on it, he's calling them Nazis. So going back to your question, this is going to be very positive for Wilders and, and Le Pen. Yeah. Whether or not they win, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, there's certainly their odds keep going up here. I mean, uh, when, when you look at the dissatisfaction and uh, all of these no-go zones, in the Netherlands and in France, especially around Paris, Marseille, all the big cities. And and then you look at what's happening in in Sweden there, and they're in total denial about the destruction of their country. I mean, what's with that? I mean, they, they've like abdicated their survival instincts. Well, the reason is, is because nobody wants to look at the cause. And that's now a trends journal, the, the edition that just went out uh, a week ago, no one's talking about where did these refugees come from? Oh, they came from Afghanistan? Huh, wonder why. No, they came from Iraq. Can't figure out why. Yeah, I wonder why. No, they came from Lib Libya. Why did they leave Libya? It was such a beautiful place before mm -hmm. the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner Obama bombed <laughs> the hell out of it. Can't understand why they left. Not, why are they leaving Syria? Oh, the you know, United States is invaded. England's invaded. The Arab League of Murderers invaded the joint. <laughs> uh, I, I don't understand why they killed here? over 600,000 Syrians, 5 million a refugee. I don't understand why they're leaving their countries that yeah. are being bombed to death by America and its coalition of the killing. I don't understand how these refugees got there. <laughs> yeah, well, Obama seems to love, or seem when he was president, seemed to love to create refugees and then to embrace them. I mean, um, well, he was a I, master at it. Well, a master baiter. Yeah, well, among <laughs> other things. I mean, baiting, baiting yeah. us is what well. Baiter, B-A-I-T-E-R. I, I know, this is a family. In the, in, the, in, the, in the real term, because that's yes. all he ever did in public. Yeah. He lied to us as an anti-war president. Oh, God. And I mentioned about Libya. Mm -hmm. Him, Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton are the primary liars. people that overthrew Gaddafi. Yeah. And when Gaddafi was being overthrown, he warned Europe that you will be flooded with refugees. Mm -hmm. And we wrote it about it in the Trends Journal in 2011. Yeah. 500,000 Libyans escaped after the United States destroyed their country. Oh, and you know who they armed to overthrow Gaddafi? It was jihadists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But that's that. So when you're asking me about the denial in these other countries, mm -hmm. that's the denial. Yeah. They won't look at the cause. So how can they look at the effect? Well, the whole thing was madness. Like you said, um, we might not like these people. 
but uh, we didn't like uh, Hussein either, Saddam. And there's a not a lot not to like about the guy. He's a killer, but uh, basically the situation was contained. Uh, so we can't just leave well enough alone. We've got to go bring democracy to the uh, Middle East, to a culture that can't accept it. Uh, something very wrong here, isn't there? Well, again, bringing democracy, that's the, the two-bit line they always use. Yeah. You know, we invaded <laughs> Libya and Iraq because their major export was broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Broccoli and lots had of nothing it. to do with it had <laughs> nothing to do with Italy with, with Libya sitting on the finest sweet crude in the world, no. or 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 a rock sitting on the, was the the third largest oil reserves in the world. Second it had nothing third. to do with yeah. any of that. Yeah. And again, you go back to that other little slime ball of a little boy of a nothing. Donald Rumsfeld, go mm -hmm. back to the photos back in the 1980s of him giving Saddam Hussein those golden spurs yeah. as the United States initiates a war against Iran using Iraq as the foil. Mm -hmm. And over a million Iranians died in a war initiated by little low-life creepy freaks like Rumsfeld. And you, of course, know, Kerry, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda that were phony, that the New York slime, or the New York Times, as they prefer to call themselves, and others promoted. All the news that's so, fit to print, right? <laughs> yep, the, the toilet paper of record. Uh, uh, yeah, truth. Well, so... so that's, that's what we're looking at. We're not looking... People refuse to look at the facts. Sure. So we've got Trump now. Uh, he's the populist, whether we like it or not. Uh, and and they're, they've declared war on him, right? I mean, they are out to remove him. Of course they are. We've never seen an election like this one. Go back. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. <laughs> we heard that one throughout the campaign, immediately after the campaign. You go back, look at the content analysis. It's there for everyone to add up. Oh, yeah. Right after the election, it was no honey, honeymoon for this guy at all. The Russians mm -hmm. won the election. And then, oh, then we're going to get the Electoral College to change their vote. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you go back. These are the facts that they were promoting back then. And it was one thing after another, never that there was an election and that the guy mm -hmm. won it. Yeah. And so... Again, for you know, it used to be okay. You don't like the person he won. Let's give him a chance. But they never gave him a chance of this, and and they've been attacking him ever since. And the media, again, they started this whole thing of fake news because they lost the election. So rather than and again, do a content analysis. Virtually every major newspaper supported Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Well. I mean, I was one of the few people uh, saying that Trump was going to win and, you know, I just knew that, uh, that it was going to happen. But to, how do you attribute the fact that he won to what, what was it that pushed him over the finish line? Well, we called him a winner in our May edition of the Trends Journal in 2016. And we said, it's the economy, stupid. That old line that Bill Clinton used back in 1992. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. Because, like, you had Obama bragging that he could, you know, like, folks. That's the other thing. I don't think of folks anymore, yeah. you know. You're like, folks. <laughs> and I'm not your folk. But anyway, you had him bragging that he, he said that uh, 10 million jobs were created. Yeah, right. Well, he did. But the 10 million jobs, according to the Harvard-Princeton study... 94% of them. They were temporary jobs. And then you look at the real numbers, 95% of the wealth created since 2009 in the United States went to the 1%. So it's the economy, stupid. And that's all this election really came down to, jobs. And Trump sold himself as a businessman. And then you look at what went on before the election. The markets were betting that Clinton would win. And when Trump led in the polls on election eve, the Dow futures were down 800 points. 
gold prices spiked. And then there was a sharp reversal. Mm. So you have a Trump rally going on because it's the economy, stupid. Again, like him or not, agree or disagree with him, if they're going to cut taxes and cut regulations, then it's going to be positive for, for the economy. And that's why you're seeing the rally. Will he be able to sustain it? Yeah, only if he comes through with what he promised. Mm -hmm. And so we're calling for a market correction, but we're not calling for a market crash at this point, mm -hmm. uh, unless there's a wild card. So again, yeah. that's why Trump won. And, the, and again, this is very important. We never had an election with both candidates at such high negative ratings, both of them over 60%. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like America liked either of these candidates. <laughs> and and well, on the other big lie was that, you know, white men, angry white men pushed Trump over the top. Trump got as many white male votes as Mitt Romney did in 2012. Mm -hmm. The reason Clinton lost is because some two million less women went out to vote than they did in 2012. Right. And yep. less blacks voted and more blacks and Hispanics moved over to Democrats than people yeah. moved over to Republicans. Right. Excuse me, the Democrats, blacks and Hispanic Democrats moved to Republican mm -hmm. more than any time in recent, you know, polling. Yeah, yeah, well, for sure. I mean, uh, could you think of a more, and I mean this not from an aesthetic standpoint, but a more unattractive candidate than Hillary Clinton. She's under FBI investigation. Uh, you really had to drink the Kool-Aid and hold your nose to really, uh, really be enthusiastic about that person, right? Exactly. I mean, and that's yeah. why so few women went out to vote. I mean, yeah. the facts are there. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. Yeah. Yep. So, so now we've got Trump and he's got it's really Trump versus the world. It looks like everybody in the world is is against him, with the exception of maybe maybe the Brits a little bit. Uh, is that too high a threshold to really get anything done? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, what if? Yeah, I know people that are on the inside of the campaign. Yeah. And what, what's they're doing very stupid things. And among the stupid things they're doing is going on the mainstream media as often as they do and make comments. Yeah. He has very strong people behind him in the business arena. And that's why he got in. So when you look like at guys like Wilbur Ross or right. Mnuchin or Cohen, I mean, if I'm going to do business with somebody and it's in a negotiation status, boy, I don't want to go up against these guys. I mean, yeah. they're, they're ruthless. They're killers. But if they're going to be representing me against other countries like China and Mexico and Vietnam and other slave labor countries, yeah, I want these guys on my side. It's like hiring the best attorney that you could find. Mm -hmm. So on, on the business end, if Trump just sticks to business, he has a very strong probability of not only bringing what he wants to fruition. But if he brings it to that level, he, again, he would also get reelected because you look at the numbers again. When you saw between Election Day and New Year's Day, it was the biggest stock market boost after a presidential election since Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1952. That's remarkable. The spike of business confidence was the highest in, De in January since mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan, 1980. Yeah. You're looking at consumer confidence going up to 2001 levels. So if he stays on the business cycle, that's his strength. If he starts moving into the war machine cycle, that he'll fail just like all the rest of them did and drain the resources from the nation that we need to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Interestingly, just with the regulatory reform, he froze all prospective regulations that were then in the hopper in every single government agency. And there was one really destructive regulation they wanted to put forth in the mining industry. Pretty much, I don't know if it was EPA, Bureau of Land Management, one of those agencies that said, if you mined on federal property, 
you had to, after the extinguishment or the completion of the project, you had to create monitoring process, aside from restoration, which you want to do, you want to make the earth, bring it back to where it was or as close to where it was before you had your project. You had to monitor the project for 30 years after its completion to make sure nothing was wrong with it. And, you know, it was just madness. I mean, that was going to put a burden on on mining concerns that would just make the U.S. a mining wasteland. They would very few, except the biggest companies and the most extravagant high dollar projects would ever be able to be built. And they fought it for years. And finally, one stroke of the pen, Trump did away with it. And I'm sure that's been repeated over and over again in sectors of the economy that we're not even aware of once Trump came in. Yeah, and not only that, then it's his whole also his ban on hiring new federal employees and doing away with a lot of them. Look, federal employees, government employees, by and large, all these are are paybacks for yeah. bureaucracy, for politicians, putting their friends and relatives and other people who give them money to get them a job because they can't get one in the private sector. Uh-huh. That's a that's a big part of bureaucracy. And I say that from experience. I, at a graduate school back in 1971, I was the number two guy running their mayoral campaign in Yonkers, New York. Oh, good old Yonkers, yeah. And I mean, that's a big city. It was almost 300,000 people. And then I worked on other campaigns in Westchester County, and they sent me up to Albany. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. So I got to see this stuff firsthand. You know, you, you don't have the best and the brightest. You have no. a lot of dumb people in there. Yeah, you're that, being charitable. That, <laughs> you're yeah. being charitable. <laughs> and, and, and it's payoffs. That's all it is. So what Trump is doing by, you know, not only freezing federal jobs, but depleting them is, is the exact way to go. Show me one agency of the federal governments that, that's effective. Education, health care. I mean, we can go up and down the line. It's failure. It's just a a complete failure every step of the way. And, you know, to me, Gerald, Gerald, if you just uh, like it's going to snow there, I think uh, today or tomorrow, and they'll say all non-essential government employees stay home. It's this perfect opportunity to fire them all because if they're non-essential, why do you need them? I mean, in any business, you only hire essential people. If they, if you don't, if they aren't essential, they don't have a job, but only in government can you have non-essential employees. That's a great line. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you. Let's fire them all. Hey, if you, if you can afford to stay home, if the government doesn't need you when there's an emergency, when does it really need you at all? You know, I was down the city uh, last night and I, I drove back up to Kingston this morning and there was a snowstorm coming and all up the New York State Thruway, everywhere you look, warning, snow tomorrow, <laughs> stay off the roads. These, these signs, you know, I, what am I, six years old? I need you to tell me what to do. Uh, usually. You, <laughs> it's during I a can't s- figure this out by myself. I need you to tell me to stay off the roads. Well, it's actually the best time to drive is during these snowstorms because all the bad drivers, just about everyone is off the road. So you have the road to yourself, you know, assuming you can drive in the snow and you've got a vehicle that can uh, handle it, you're probably going to be safer than you are during your normal commute home. That's always been my philosophy about it, (laughs) but, uh, you know. Really, I know. (laughs) But I mean, I'm just saying they treat us like little kids. Well, and, and that's what the federal government is. And again, not only, by the way, just to be fair about all this, all the government agencies, including the military. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of these wars. Yeah. Uh, who is? They have not won one since World War Two. Yeah. Well, they haven't gone out to win one since World War Two, right? I mean, I mean, look what they did to nuts. Iraq. Look what they did to Afghanistan. Look what they done to Libya and Syria. They bomb yeah. the hell out of these countries. I mean, it's just disgusting. Yeah, and it's I not, totally agree. And, and people, you know, I wonder why they hate us. Can't figure it out, man. I, I got it. I, I'm an, I live in, in New York and I have a, I got it. Here's a better one, Kerry. Yeah. <laughs> the United States elects this guy that has his finger on the trigger of the nuclear arsenal and we're a foreign country and we don't like this guy. Let's go take him out. 
because he's a threat to the rest of the world. So we're going to go into this country called America, bomb the hell out of it, kill mm -hmm. millions of people. You think we would fight back? Yeah, I think we might. No, no, <laughs> no we would be terrorists if we fought back. Uh -huh. We would be militants. And then when we want to blow the brains out of the people that came here and blew the brains out of our mother, father, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, our loved ones, and when we had no future, we would be called radicals <laughs> when we wanted to get even with them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, it just is remarkable uh, what a mess the country's gotten into. So the, for, the powers that be, the establishment, all the people that Trump is fighting, what won't they do to try to take him down, Gerald? They'll try everything. And, and I think that the ones that you have to watch, the deep state is now a reality. We saw with that WikiLeaks again, once again, with the CIA and the FBI looking at everything and listening to everything that we're doing, and the FBI telling us that we have, have no, we, we, that doesn't exist, we have no privacy. Mm -hmm. So I think the deep state, and, you, and a lot of people saying what happened with Flynn, and because he wanted to have peace with Russia. And yeah. so I think the deep state is the greatest concern. So that's no longer no, no longer a conspiracy theory. Yeah. It's in front of us. <laughs> yeah. And and the other one is the economy. I mean, they could they're going to be raising interest rates several times this year. It looks like at least three times. Mm -hmm. And the only reason the markets went up after the recession, after the, the panic of 08 was all the cheap money they put in a zero interest rate policy. They've only raised interest rates twice within the last 10 years. It allows you 50 basis points. So will there be a pullback in real estate and stocks when they start raising interest rates? So those are the kind of things that could bring the economy down. But bringing him down, I believe it's going to be a deep state issue. Yeah. And here's the thing, uh, the longer he's in office there, I think he's learned the lessons of Kennedy. He's studied that history and he knows pretty much he can't trust anybody in Washington unless he's gotten a dog. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. There's nothing you could trust in Washington. You know, I have a photograph of me and John Connolly. He was the governor of Texas that was sitting in front of uh, Kennedy and mm -hmm. took the bullet in the back. I have a photograph of me, him, and his wife, Nellie, in front of the book depository, 1992. And it was their first time back since the assassination. And as we're walking back into the Anatole Hotel, Connolly said to me, you know, Gerald, I read your book. My book at the time was Trend Tracking. And he said, it's a fine piece of work. And he said, and I know your heart's in the right place. He said, but you don't have a clue what's going on in America. <laughs> and neither do the American people. Because if they did, there'd be a revolution in this country. I believe that was that. 1992. <laughs> and this is the guy that, by the way, not only was he the Democratic governor of Texas when he got shot, he was the Treasury secretary under Richard Nixon, a Republican. Mm -hmm. This is the guy when they took us off the gold standard. He was the man right. telling me this back in 92. Remarkable. Is remarkable, and here we are. But uh, hey, we've got a little reason for optimism here and abroad. So, Gerald, just tell us where we find you, best place, uh, how we subscribe to Trends Journal. Yeah, the Trends Journal, trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch.com. And we know, Kerry, that people are having difficult financial times. Yes. So we have a discount request page. All right. Excellent. And uh, we'll have a link to uh, trendsresearch.com on financialsurvivalnetwork.com, our site. Gerald, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on again and be well. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Like, you know, first rate loss of rights. He's bombing. He's invaded Syria. He, he's started a war against the Kurds after the uh, his party, by the way, I think it was June of 2015 when they lost an election. They, they didn't get as many votes as they could and they, they lost a majority. That's when he started waging the war against the Kurds. And yeah. this is a guy calling 
uh, the, the Dutch Nazis, and he came out against uh, Germany last week, too. What's going on, Kerry, is they have a, an election coming up on, on Thursday in, in uh, Turkey. Yes. And it's a referendum to give Erdogan, uh, I guess, more rights to become a dictator. It's, a, it's, a re, it, it's redoing their constitution. So, for example, in Germany, you have about 1.5 million Turks. Mm -hmm. And they want the Turkish government wants to be able to campaign in Germany, in the Netherlands, yep. in Austria, in Switzerland, where there are a lot of Turkish people. And these countries are saying, no, man, yeah, we they don't keep want the campaign here. home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's insane. And because, yeah, well, it's no more insane than opening up our borders for tens of millions of people when we can't take care of our own. So it's the same thing. How dare you tell us what to do mm -hmm. is what he's saying. We, sh we have the right to do anything we want in any country. So rather than you know being called out on it, he's calling them Nazis. So going back to your question, this is going to be very positive for Wilders and, and Le Pen. Yeah. Whether or not they win, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, they, certainly their odds keep going up here. I mean, uh, when when you look at the dissatisfaction and uh, all of these no-go zones in the Netherlands and in France, especially around Paris, Marseille, all the big cities, and and then you look at what's happening in in Sweden there, and they're in total denial about the destruction of their country. I mean. What's with that? I mean, they, they've like abdicated their survival instincts. Well, the reason is, is because nobody wants to look at the cause. And that's in our Trends Journal, the, the edition that just went out uh, a week ago. No one's talking about where did these refugees come from? Oh, they came from Afghanistan? Huh, wonder why. No, they came from Iraq. Can't figure out why. Yeah, I wonder why. No, they came from Lib Libya. Why did they leave Libya? It was such a beautiful place before mm -hmm. the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner Obama bombed <laughs> the hell out of it. Can't understand why they left. No, why are they leaving Syria? Oh, the you know, United States is invaded. England's invaded. The Arab League of Murderers invaded the joint. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't understand why they killed here? over 600,000 Syrians, 5 million are refugees. I don't understand why they're leaving their countries that yeah. are being bombed to death by America and its coalition of the killing. I don't understand how these refugees got there. <laughs> yeah, well, Obama seems to love, or seem, when he was president, seemed to love to create refugees and then to embrace them. I mean, um, well, he was a I, master at it. Well, a master baiter. Yeah, well, among <laughs> other things. I mean, baiting, baiting yeah. us is what Bader, I mean. Baiter, B-A-I-T-E-R. I, I know, this is a family. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the real term, because that's yes. all he ever did in public. Yeah. He lied to us as an anti-war president. Oh, God. And I mentioned about Libya, mm -hmm. him... Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton are the primary liars. people that overthrew Gaddafi. Yeah. And when Gaddafi was being overthrown, he warned Europe that you will be flooded with refugees. Mm -hmm. And we wrote it about it in the Trends Journal in 2011. Yeah. 500,000 Libyans escaped after the United FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 3-13-17, getting close to the Ides of March. For those of you who believe uh, there's something to be wary of, but uh, with us now, Trends Journal's Gerald Salente hasn't been with us for a while. Gerald, welcome back. Hey, always great being on with you, Kerry. Hey, and always great to have you on, Gerald. So uh, populism seems to be the word of the day, right? Uh, sweeping 
sweeping the uh, globe, I guess, or the Western world in any event. Yes, it is. And you even heard the Pope come out against it. <laughs> it must be good then, right? <laughs> must be good, yep. I mean, the Pope, this guy's another Obama, you know. <laughs> He's just, really? Oh, that's the way I look at it. He just says uh, stuff and, and doesn't follow through. I mean, where's the Pope talking about anti-war? You don't hear a peep from the Pope about that. And I'm Catholic, you know, so I mean, I know. You know, I, I grew up Catholic, so I could, you know, say what I want, you know, <laughs> people can't attack me on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I launched Occupy Peace. I put my money where my mouth is. That's right. So when I hear the Pope doesn't, uh, you know, you don't hear him railing out against the Afghan war, the Iraq war, the Syrian war, the Yemen yeah. war, the Libyan war, mm -hmm. you know. So he's railing out against populism and trying to compare it to, you know, Nazi Germany. And they're yeah. all playing that cheap card. And you, you heard Bill Clinton come out, Slick Willie Clinton, right. who sold the country it out with NAFTA, you know, how dare we we promote protectionism? Yeah, how Why dare can't we? we protect ourselves? Hey, <laughs> you know, I, I used to teach close combat for many years. I'm a close combat practitioner. I'll protect myself. I'm not allowed to protect myself? <laughs> so what's this against protectionism? Why should I bend over for a little clown like you to sell us out to the globalists who enrich you, slick willy, yeah. with their donations that, of course, donations, adults call it bribes and payoffs. Mm -hmm. So that's what all this is about. It's the people getting shafted around the world that are tied to getting shafted. Mm -hmm. And they call it a populist movement. How dare we try to defend our ethnicity if we're Italian, if we're German, if we're Dutch, if we're French, or if we are a country of Americans. Yeah. And all of this stuff about anti-immigration Hey, everybody out there that wants more immigrants coming in when we can't take care of our own, here's what I suggest you do. Bring them into your home, feed them, school them, clothe them. You want to do it, that's your trip. Don't yeah. tell me I have to get on your trip. We have 320 million people here. We can't take care of our own. I say don't take in anybody like they did during the Great Depression. They closed the borders to everyone. Not only Mexicans, Italians, Polish, German, Irish, everybody. They did not take in people during the Great Depression. You don't bring people into your home when you can't even feed your own family. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is true. So your thoughts, uh, is Wilder is going to win and Le Pen, you think they're both going to going to win their respective elections? You know, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I Wilder's is, is definitely uh, going to be doing much better the elections coming up in a couple of days after we heard the uh, the, the uh, Turkish president uh, Erdogan uh, over the weekend uh, is accusing the Dutch's quote Nazis. Yeah, of and, all the people, uh, of all the people to accuse of being Nazis, uh, you know, it's absurd. Of course, he said Nazism is alive in the West. This is a guy Erdogan. He's locked up several thousand people because of a coup attempt. They've taken rights away from the people in Turkey. States destroyed their country. Oh, and you know who they armed to overthrow Gaddafi? It was jihadists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But that's that. So when you're asking me about the denial in these other countries, mm -hmm. that's the denial. Yeah. They won't look at the cause. So how can they look at the effect? Well, the whole thing was madness. Like you said, um, we might not like these people, but uh, we didn't like uh, Hussein either, Saddam. And there's a, not, a lot not to like about the guy. He's a killer. But uh, basically, the situation was contained. Uh, so we can't just leave well enough alone. We've got to go bring democracy to the uh, Middle East, to a culture that can't accept it. Uh, something very wrong here, isn't there? Well, again, bringing democracy, that's the, the two-bit line they always use. Yeah. You know, we invaded <laughs> Libya and Iraq because their major export was broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
broccoli and lots had of nothing it. to do with <laughs> it had nothing to do with Italy with, with Libya sitting on the finest sweet crude in the world no. or 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 a rock sitting on the was the, the third largest oil reserves in the world Second it had nothing third. to do with yeah. any of that yeah and again you go back to that other little slime ball of a little boy of a nothing Donald Rumsfeld, go mm -hmm. back to the photos back in the 1980s of him giving Saddam Hussein those golden spurs yeah. as the United States initiates a war against Iran using Iraq as the foil. Mm -hmm. And over a million Iranians died in a war initiated by little low-life creepy freaks like Rumsfeld. And you, of course, know, Kerry, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda that were phony, that the New York slime, or the New York Times, as they prefer to call themselves, and others promoted. Well, the news that's so, fit to print, right? <laughs> yep, well, the 